Hey everyone, so I've been asked by a lot of you guys to make a video on how to debloat Windows 10 and make it usable for a power user, so someone who maybe likes Linux and BSD but can't use them due to software limitations. It's no secret that Windows has a huge backlog of software and games which is unrivaled by any other operating system. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of flack for that in the comments with people saying how GIMP is totally viable alternative to Photoshop and how you can totally game on Linux using GPU pass-through. However, in this video, I don't want to focus on why you would use Windows and not Linux. If someone has to use Windows, but at the same time doesn't want any spyware or data collection, that's totally valid and let's leave it at that. So if you're looking for a sane Windows 10 configuration and you want to use all those software in games, then that's the right video for you. In this video, I'll explain how to download the official Windows image, how to install it, debloat it, and remove as much spyware as possible with a project that is called Windows 10 Ameliorated. But before we get started with the guide, I want to make a small disclaimer. The modifications we're going to perform on Windows 10 are pretty extreme and focus mainly on improving your privacy and security as well as preserving your sanity. However, they do come with certain limitations and concessions and they do also require a certain degree of technical skills and patience. If you're just looking to improve Windows performance, make your games run faster, etc., here's a great guide by Chris Titus Tech. However, I think if you really value your privacy, it won't be enough to just install, say, Windows 10 LTSC and apply some group policies. Yes, unfortunately, the time has shown that using group policies, registry tweaks, as well as apps like Shut Up Windows 10 and Windows Privacy Dashboard is not enough to reliably disable spyware and telemetry in Windows 10. The only thing those methods do is temporarily disable the data collection. But oftentimes with the next update, all this functionality is brought back and your settings get overridden. So at best, those methods are a band-aid and at worst, they give you false sense of security while at the same time doing nothing to stop the data collection. The only reliable method to stop Windows 10 from spying on you is to completely purge all the spyware-related functionality. And this is exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. That being said, if you're interested in making Windows 10 as good as possible in terms of privacy, it does come with some limitations. First, Windows Update has to go. I know it sounds very counterproductive since a lot of security and privacy fixes are being delivered through Windows Update. However, Windows Update is basically the central piece of telemetry and spyware in Windows and thus we'll have to remove it. You'll still be able to install security and future updates manually, but this process will be much more difficult than just going to settings and pressing check for updates. You also won't be able to use or install any app from Microsoft Store. For some people it's not such a big deal, but a lot of apps and games are only available from Windows Store, so there's that. And probably the biggest downside to this method is that you won't be able to install or use any version of Microsoft Office that is newer than Office 2007. I know it's a big bummer since a lot of people keep Windows on their hard drive with the sole purpose of using Microsoft Office. However, just like Windows 10, newer versions of Office are filled to the brim with telemetry and spyware functionality. And at this point, Microsoft Office products are basically glorified keyloggers. However, Office 2007 is still alive and kicking and it works perfectly fine on Windows 10. So maybe that will be enough for you. And last but not least, since we're getting rid of Windows Update, we'll also have to say goodbye to DirectX 12, unfortunately, since Windows Update is the only way you can get it. I don't know if there are actually any games that run DirectX 12 exclusively, but if there are, they obviously wouldn't work on this version of Windows. So that's something to keep in mind. So at the end, you're kind of getting an environment that is close to Windows 7, basically without Cortana, without forced updates, without any other telemetry or spyware bullshit, but that at the same time supports all the newer software and games. If you're still using Windows 7 and if you have been reluctant to upgrade because you don't like the Windows 10's intrusiveness, the spyware, the telemetry, then that's your lucky day. As I already mentioned, we're going to be using scripts and tools from a project called Windows 10 AME or Ameliorated. They also provide a Windows 10 ISO ready to go, which you can install and enjoy all the benefits out of the box. However, in the spirit of open source, we're going to go hands on and do everything ourselves. And it's not just because downloading a Windows ISO from a sketchy website is a bad idea. First of all, the ISO that is provided by the AME project does not include all the newest updates and security patches. And apart from that, it's based on a pretty old version of Windows dated May 2019. So I would say it's definitely worth it to spend two hours of your time and do everything yourself. So the first thing that we need to do is download the app called Fido. Fido is an open source tool that lets you 
get a link for the official Windows 10 image. You can also use this website instead. It basically has the same functionality as Fido, but I figured it's good to have some alternatives, so there you go. So once you've downloaded the app, unpack it and launch it. First, of course, we want Windows 10, so I'm choosing Windows 10 here. Next, you need to choose Windows 10 version. And this gets a little bit confusing because the way Microsoft calls Windows revisions and the way they're conventionally referred to is different. For example, the latest version as of making this video is 2004, Four, but in Fido it's called 20H1. So do some research before and make sure you know which is which. The latest version of Windows 10 that is officially supported by the AME project is Windows 1903. However, this is kind of old and I personally tried ameliorating the Windows 2004 and it worked just fine. But if you want the most stable experience, just download the latest version that is supported by the AME project. Next, we need to choose the edition, just choose Windows 10 Home slash Pro. And then finally, choose your language and architecture. In most cases, you'll want x64. As for the language, it's kind of obvious, but make sure to choose the language that you want right here and right now because you can't change it later. And then finally, click on download and the image will start downloading. And while it's downloading, let's get a couple more things. First, we need an app called Rufus. This is basically an app that will help us burn the Windows image to a flash drive. If you're in Linux, you need an app called Woe USB. It should be in your distro's repositories. You can't simply DD the Windows image to a flash drive like you're used to with Linux images because it lacks a bootloader, so that's why we need a special app for that. Then we need a utility called SHA1SUM. This is what we're going to use to verify our image. On Windows, you need to download it from this website, but on Linux, it should be installed by default. Next, we need to download the newest cumulative updates and service stack updates. Head over to this link, click on the Windows version that you chose, and then click on the first item in this list, which is called in this release. Copy the update code, go to the Microsoft updates catalog, paste it and download the update for your architecture and Windows version. Version. Make sure not to download the version for Windows Server, then go back to the page with the update, search the page for latest SSU, and you're going to get the code of latest SSU here in the parenthesis. Do the same thing, copy it, paste it in the Microsoft Updates catalog, download the right version for your architecture. Next thing that we need to download is a Linux ISO. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. In all seriousness though, the thing is, Windows Update and all the telemetry services are so intrusive and so deeply ingrained in Windows that you need to completely purge them from the outside. So that's why we need the Linux ISO and we're gonna use it to launch our special script that removes all the traces of telemetry and data collection, including Windows Update. If you delete those components from Windows, they're simply going to reinstall themselves and continue business as usual. I know it's a lot of things to download, but be patient, that's the last of them. Drivers. Yes, since there's no Windows Update anymore, Windows isn't going to magically find drivers for all of your devices, so you have to do it the manual way, Windows XP style. Fortunately, a lot of vendors have so-called SCCM packages for their devices, which let you conveniently install all the drivers at once using a simple console command. Now that our Windows image is downloaded, let's verify it. We need to do it for two reasons. First, to make sure that nobody tampered with it or put anything nasty in it. And second, to make sure that it has been downloaded properly so that we're not gonna have any surprises on the installation step. Go to the folder where you downloaded SHA1 SUM app, as well as the Windows image, shift plus right click on the empty space and press open in PowerShell. There, type SHA1 SUM and then the name of your Windows image. It will take some time, but at the end it should display a sequence of numbers and letters which you should copy. Then head over to this website and paste the checksum. As you can see, in my case, it is a genuine Windows image, so that's great. So now that we have a verified Windows image, let's burn it to the flash drive using Rufus. Launch Rufus and choose your flash drive in the menu. Then choose your Windows ISO, make sure you have NTFS as a file system and click start. This will take some time, so feel free to grab your favorite beverage and a book. Once the flash Flash drive is ready, create a folder in it and copy everything we've downloaded to it, including the Linux ISO, drivers, updates, Rufus, as well as the amelioration script which you can download from their website. And now we're finally done with all the preparations so you can reboot your device and install Windows as usual. I'm sure I don't have to tell you how to do that because it's not your first time installing Windows, but in case you're asked to enter a product key, just choose the I don't have the key option. And one more thing that I want to mention which is really important is you do not enable the internet connection until the whole process is done. I can't stress it enough, do not connect your computer to Wi-Fi or Ethernet net throughout the whole process, because otherwise Windows Update is just going to ruin our whole thing. Once Windows is installed, it's going to take you through the whole usual process of 
you know, setting it up. There's nothing special here either, just say no to everything. And the first thing that we need to do once we're at the Windows desktop is hide the search bar, the task view, and remove all the icons from the start menu. Those might seem like very obvious things to do, but we need to do them now because otherwise those settings might not be available after we debloat Windows. So our next step is installing updates. Go to the Explorer and open the drive C. Here create two folders, one for SSUs and another one for cumulative updates. Next go to the flash drive, open the folder where you put all the updates, hold shift, right click on the empty space and click open PowerShell window here. Let's first list all the files in the directory so that we know which is which. And by the way, you can tell which update is which by comparing the sizes. The SSU is much smaller than the cumulative update. So first let's unpack the SSU update. The command is expand-f semicolon asterisk, then the name of the file with the update, and then the directory to which you want to unpack it. And now let's change the directory with the SSU and install it. It's very important that you install SSU first and the cumulative update second. Don't forget to reboot your machine after the update is installed. Now let's install the cumulative update. The command is the same, but the path will be different. I noticed that you can't use the auto completion here, so I basically just copied the name of the file in the explorer. This update will take much more time than the first one, and at the end make sure to reboot twice. And finally, the last thing that we need to do before ameliorating our system is to clean up all the junk that is left over after updating our system. So now that that's taken care of, let's open the flash drive, go to the folder with updates and all the other stuff, right click on the amelioration script and choose run as administrator. Here press 1, kick back and relax as you watch all the bloatware being drained from your system. So after that's done, don't close the window, instead press 3 and then click reset password. Here you need to type the administrator password of your choice. Next click OK, choose your user and click on properties. Here we need to demote our user from administrators to standard user, which will basically mitigate 94% of all the security vulnerabilities. Don't worry, you'll still be able to run administrator tasks, you'll just need to enter the administrator's password, which I'm sure you'll agree is much more secure. After that's done, click OK and click yes when asked to sign out. In my case it didn't work for some reason so I had to press Control l delete and sign out from that menu. Next let's sign back in, open the PowerShell as administrator and change your user's password. For that type net user, your username, asterisk and press enter. Here you'll need to type your password twice, the symbols won't be displayed so don't worry about that. And that's it, we've basically done everything there is to do from Windows itself, so now we need a little help from our friend, Linux. Copy the folder with the updates and other shenanigans from your flash drive to the desktop and then use Rufus to burn the Linux ISO to this flash drive. After that's done, reboot your system and boot into Linux. It's also safe to enable the internet connection again as long as you don't boot into Windows. Once you're on the Linux desktop, double click your Windows drive in order to mount it. Then launch web browser and go to ameliorated.info. Here click build it yourself and search the page for Linux script. Once you find it, right click on the download button and copy the link. Then go to the Windows drive, open the terminal here, type wget and paste the download link. For some reason I wasn't able to launch the script because the bash would complain about some kind of command not found error, so I had to use the utility called dos to unix which you can download from the official repositories. Just type sudo apt-get install dos to unix and then type dos to unix file name of the script. In case you already finished the cup of tea that you made earlier in the video, go make another one or maybe a couple because this will take a long time. But once the script is finished, we're basically done here. Our Windows is completely free from telemetry, spyware and other nasty stuff. Well, as free as it can be, basically. Now you can safely reboot into Windows with the internet connection on. However, here we're pretty much left without any default apps. The image viewer is gone, there's no Windows Media Player, and even Internet Explorer is gone, so you can't even use it for its designated purpose downloading another browser. Luckily, the amelioration script does have the post amelioration step baked into it in order to install a pretty minimal set of open source apps to replace the missing default apps. Basically, it will install Firefox, OpenShell, which is Windows 7 style replacement for the start menu, VLC, JPEG view, and some other apps and utilities. By default, it also installs only Office, but I personally prefer LibreOffice, so that's why I edited the script 
to replace only office with LibreOffice. I also added the add local equals start menu argument after the open shell in the script because by default open shell also comes with the classic explorer which basically mimics the Windows 7 explorer however it doesn't quite work with the Windows 2004 so this argument will only install the start menu components. So once all the applications are installed you can also customize open shell. I personally like to remove the start menu link and the metro app since we won't be having any and you can also change the skin, color, etc. It's very customizable. I won't be covering the driver installation in this video but in case you need drivers this would be a good time to install them. And the last thing that I want to mention is Harden Tools by Security Without Borders. This is an application that hardens a lot of Windows settings so that you have less stuff to worry about such as security vulnerabilities and other things. And after the script is finished we're done. Basically we have a very lean mean private and secure Windows 10 installation with very little to no bloatware and with no telemetry, spyware or other bullshit. Now there are two more tips that I want to give you. These are the solutions for problems that I found myself while using Windows 10 ameliorated. First thing is input languages. There's basically no way to change the input language with Windows settings so you have to deal with PowerShell. It's pretty easy though and this is what it looks like. You just have to know your language code. For example with German it's DE-DE all caps and for example with US English is EN-US all caps. And as you can see after entering the command I am able to switch between German and English. And the last thing that I want to mention today is Intel DPST. What is Intel DPST? It's cancer. There's nothing to say here, it's basically a fancy power management thingy that Intel has implemented. In theory it should make your display consume less power, in reality though, it just causes your display to flicker, lose brightness and just behave weirdly. Normally you're able to change it in the Intel driver settings, however you can't get the Intel driver settings on Windows AME since we can't run any Microsoft Store applications. So instead you should use this utility, it's called DPST Control and basically it lets you enable or disable DPST by launching one of those bad files. As you can see in my case I don't have the Intel GPU but if you do, this will disable DPST forever and save you from a whole lot of trouble and possibly migraine. And that's it. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as usual, I would like to thank my patrons, Mitchell Valentino, Ray Piria, and everyone else who supports this channel. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.